Hello and welcome. It is the 30th of May, 2019. Time for yet another crypto chart video. And we'll take a look at all of my coins that I have on here. I pr pretty much trade them all with the exception of things like Ethereum and the SPY. So let's get started. Now this is the only one that's really up. I mean, silver's up two-thirds of a percent. And even for silver, I'd be saying, meh. I mean, it's going through lower volatil volatility the last uh, 12 or 1300 days, which is why I'm focusing primarily on this, hoping for cryptos to do well before silver does. But the market does what it does. All right. This is the only one that's up. And I'm pretty much in a nice little day trade here. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm in at an average cost of even below in here. But I like this hourly setup and this daily setup. I mean, really? Yeah, maybe you can have a little... It's, I just like how it's looking to probably leave this and, oh my God, has it been down so much in this weekly chart? Okay, bear market rally. I've heard a lot about this possibly being that of a, a scam coin and, I mean, it's been down a lot. But it's a trade for me. And now that I'm at this level here, it's one that I technically now can't lose if I trade it towards such. Volatile day today. That's uh, I'm going to put this in like alpha, like in whatever order to, to start. But uh, Bitcoin, it's, you can't tell on this weekly that it's volatile today. On the daily chart, well, I guess you could tell from this high. I mean, what got over 9,000 and gave it all back. Meanwhile... It's doing so above the 18 average of highs, which is, has to be rising if it's above it. I think that's impossible to be above a declining. Eh, it almost is above. I mean, the only way it is if you go like way down and up in one period. But no, it's holding it really, really well. It hasn't came back to where it came from, albeit close and albeit a pierce above. Thus, it barely went above the highs in here. It hasn't, at least not as of yet, done so. The 18 average of highs comes in at 8,468. It was higher than it was at the start of the day for the fact that it reads today's high in at 9,090. And uh, the 18 average of lows in at 7,959. And that will be over 8,000 in about 4 hours and 15 minutes when a new day set comes in. Four-hour term, I mean, there we can see it. The big move up and the big move down. It goes above this level of resistance to highs not seen well over a year. Every time it makes new highs above, it'll be uh, greater than one-year highs. And then it gives it all back, going below where, not only where it came from, but even to the uh, end, the, the area of support that's got this little move in here. So failed breakdown. Fast move higher, fast move is a failed breakout, and now we're going down. Okay, I got gotcha. you. On the single hour term, there was this uh, big green, big red, and then now just uh, volatility, uh, with, vo with volatility, uh, maintaining itself right now with the 18 lows. Still trying to, uh, the reaction is still trying to get direction, I, as I see it. I can't tell from there. As... You have the move up, and you can see within the red candle is a big line. So it went down to 85.50. It went up to at least 87.13. We can see that it pulled back again here. Now it has rallied within here, a little bit of sideways move. It has done nothing yet positive to revert the trend. But at the same time, uh, other than the microscopic breach, it hasn't broken down below. It is showing weakness short term amongst the uh, 18. On the five-minute term time frame, there we have it. Like, five, like four out of five periods, really high green with one small pause red one in the middle. And then three large red ones down. Markets usually go up faster than they go down. More so against uh, Bitcoin for alts, I guess. And in traditional markets, it's usually like this. It usually goes down faster than it goes up. But on that move in here, let's see if we could see more to this uh, amongst its uh, one minute term time frame and see uh, just how fast it was. So there we have it. It's two big minutes in here. We can see uh, just before this point in here, what we were uh, a nice little uptrend. 
comes down, corrects the 18, resists it, so therefore the correction is still in play to here. That's also going to make this rising 18 go flat, and it then breaks below. That's going to make the 18 start to decline, and it has a deep decline from the low, so that's definitely a cautionary sign. Uh, this one in here, and as you can see, just within this alone, this was an indication it's going to go down. Now, you just can't take a look at this and say, okay, this is going down like huge. We're breaking down below this low, and it's just going to be a fast, like a big blimp down and a big blimp up. And there's your big blimp down and your big blimp up. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But within the minute, it took, it was literally less than 120 seconds going from 89 to like 85 change, and then bringing it back to 88.37. And since then, it, saw, it established this range, 86 lever change supported, broken down, and all that type of stuff. As uh, we now enter to the current time, which is 1540, 1547, rather. And uh, Bitcoin price is having this little bit of a move right here. Okay, short term, it just had its fall. I mean, nothing like it was before originally, but definitely look at this on the 5. And you're like, okay, well, we were in this correctionary mode and we lost it. But meanwhile, while this is going on, I don't want to spend too much time on the short term. It's doing this while it's having lower volatility. The size of these corrections are tiny. And thus, it definitely can have more if that's what's required. The 18 average of lows is always something I'm looking for as a level of support if there's going to be price corrections. Where it come from and even going the d nicely within, which... 8,000 even type thing is most certainly what I'm looking for support because uh, this was big resistance. So it goes down like, okay, resistance here at 83 change. We got to get above it. Nope. Okay, uh, let's move, move here. Resistance 83.20. We got to get above it. Okay, we did. And now that I had a good move, okay, well, that, I'm looking for that to be support now if there's going to be any pullbacks and there hasn't. Not to that number. So... Uh, let's just see how it works from there. I most certainly am just, just as strong uh, I mean, I mean, mathematically, it's so much easier, of course, but that it's going to have a nice break above. But I'd even have to venture that uh, hmm, yeah, probably a better chance it goes here than here as well. I just realized we could easily go here, back down here, and then above. That's, that's something I think has an okay chance of happening. And I mean, that's whatever. That's my best guess. That's all it is. My best guess is that we do pierce above this, maybe even hit the 12.9 and have a decent pullback. If we don't hit the 12.9, I think we'll probably, and even if we do hit the 12.9, I think we uh, will probably come back to the 63 uh, as an area where it will lowish, maybe, and how long it will consolidate from there and how long it takes to get back. I'm not going to try to state, but then break above this, and then it's next test of uh, 20, and then it's in somewhat matter of time after that, I think we'll break it. That's my prediction, and again, your risk, your reward, and let's move on. So, uh, again, some of these coins in here, as far as the gainers are concerned, I mean, sky silver, 0.6%, but what does that mean in the daily? It's like, man, it's just back up to the 18. Ethereum, I mean, it's actually, I mean, it's got one of those this kind of candles. It had a big breakout, but there's a lot of ones that uh, share this point of view. I'm waiting to buy this at 500, and it's just a long, long way. Just as just a fun like game, like I'm at a casino just fooling around, playing with my theory of massive volatility to see if this game will work, and we'll see. It could be a scam coin, I don't know. It could be a great one. Either way, low risk, high end low risk. As I got, what percentage of my, oh, well under 1% of my bankroll on this. So yeah, it's not much at all. So other coins on here, like gold and silver and Canadian dollars. SPY is the U.S. market. It's like, it was going down, I think, before. Yeah, it's starting to go into declining mode. And uh, let's just take a look at the next one. I'm going to fix the screen first, just to show more periods really quickly. This is just a look at index, TUSD, USD, just to see how the tether, and I guess even for that matter, the true U.S. dollar is stabilizing within the market and, and this one level that's like par it's just in within that level so that's fine gold to silver ratio is not doing anything canadian u.s dollar basically it's a it's a it's a three quarter one third thing right now uh 0.74 and about uh well let's get a calculator up that's one x it's probably like 1.34 a uh, three seven with more closer to one three four 
Oh, where's my 1x button? 135, I'm way off. So 35% or about a quarter. So it's basically, but ba basically I look at it as in, depending on which way you're looking at it, if we're talking US dollars, we multiply it by 1.33 to get it to Canadian. And if we're talking about Canadian dollars, we'll multiply it by three quarters to get into US dollars. I use this as the index, the one that says the 0.74. DXY, that's like a whatever to look at. Bitcoin dominance. This is an interesting one. I want to talk about this because... I mean, this is like a, what the heck is that? But anyway, this is an interesting one. Uh, as we look at this intraday, we had a spot where this thing was breaking down as I was expecting. So uh, this leaves it. This is big support. Now I'm looking for this to be resistance. Okay, I looked for it. I found it. It was. How is it going to hold this spot? The now what situation? Uh, it's bullishly. We got to hold this level in here. 18 average, where it came from, get above it bearishly you resist where you're supposed to you got to come down to the 18 at that point either have a failed if you wish you could have a failed breakout higher or spend extended time there but then you're gonna have to fall down below come down to this level maybe you want to do another lower high rally again that's up to you and then of course go below it but we're at this level of resistance and it happens so fast obviously it happened during that uh, time frame when Bitcoin was going through all that type of stuff because coins like Litecoin, they were going through a lot of stuff like that as well. So Neo and Florin, which happened to be side by side, I'm trading together, so I'm not going to show too much on that. Dash is traded with Theta. Komodo, which, oh, I mean, this just sucks how it pulled back, but you know what? That's fine. And uh, this is when it went up and there's just the long, long pullback. And what does that mean on the daily term time frame? Well, it means it had a big move and we've gone above the 18. So it's just, like I've said, every single time it makes a big break above it. Now it's got to hold any pullbacks. This is one of a pullback. So far, it's, it can get, do more if it wants because I want to see it hold the 18. It's not even there yet. But one of the things I do like is for it to like not happen fast. But if it does, I mean, 16, what, 200, that's the area for really the must hold. I mean, I don't want the 18 average of lows to test down here. So in this case, 18 average of highs and uh, pierce below is where I want to. I want the 18 average to accelerate in price through time to at least maybe go up to like 1543, which would be a, a small pierce below. Uh, but we'll see how it goes on that. It's, it's, a, it's an attempt to break it. You scream out, you do stage number two, establish level of resistance. Now it's working on stage three and that's coming back to correctionary phase. Uh, we've already looked at Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash uh, had a little bit of a pullback, but a lot of these things, just uh, I guess, uh, let's do one hour. And uh, not so much here, but having this move up here, coming back down, great move of matching level, but failing within this correctionary bandit when it left it, it's had a significant break. But overall, now coming back to that key area of support, which, uh, I, I mean, 18 average of lows. I mean, I wouldn't mind it being supported in a couple of days, maybe rise up to like 503. But, I mean, that's what's got a hold. It's at the upper area. I mean, it can go down a bit more, 507, so be it. it that's, uh, it's still been doing what it's so trying to do for so long, break this level. And every time in the past, like May 16th and May 21st, when it did it, it's failed. And it looks like yesterday and today, it might be failing its attempt again to break above it. No, no, no problem with failing. It's like failing your driver's test for the second, third, and fourth time. You just redo it again until you pass. And moving on, we're going to move on next to, say, Litecoin against, uh, I mean, this is just one of the coins that's my favorite. It's my largest amount. Uh, very similar, of course, here to Litecoin coming back. But back to this band again, it's been supporting it very, very well. But this one hour time frame is just sick. As it has its big, big move and the move higher that goes up there after that. It's just a magnificent play. And 15 minute time frame. Uh, this is going from like 127 and now it's at 131, but it gets it back very quick instantly. So just magnificent within it. And I got three different Bitcoin indexes. One, because I want to check Bitfinex out. Uh, one for Coinbase, which has all those Fibonacci lines. And one for Bitstamp, which has more data in a place I can use my drawing tool if I ever decide to do so. Litecoin Ethereum, is, it's not really a shits and giggles coin more or less, but it's an important one. And I think it's just, if I'm going to show Ethereum, to me, this is just of interest too. I just don't trade Ethereum, and I probably should, but for, I actually like stuff like Bitcoin Cash better. Uh, so that's the main reason. I already showed Komodo Litecoin against the US fiat. And as far as this on the daily term time frame, this, 
it, it's just close. It's hanging in there. I mean, this is a pause day. One, two, three pause days after a series of four green up days in a row from the 18 lows. It's still, like the Bitcoin, still above 18 average of highs. Still hasn't technically came back to where we came from here. And it most certainly hasn't came back to where we came from in here. So, if it does that, it does it. It doesn't have to. But I realize when I have three days of sideways correction like this, and I shorten out the time frame, single hour, well, there's all this established resistance. This was a real valid attempt to break it, and it failed. And now that it's coming down on this level, oh, right down to where it came from. Oh, oh that, that, was, that was lucky. I mean, how often is it going to do that? Come very close to this like area like that. I mean, really. And, but, and then it comes back up, meeting up with the 18 average of highs, resisting this area. I mean, what, what's the chances that it would just resist this key area of previous support after breaking it fast? Things to look out for. I mean, didn't, if you've been watching my videos, you would have known, okay, rally attempt. Oh boy, what's this? This is this is big. I mean, coming back to here was fine. Even coming back to the 18 lows, I'm not concerned. But what's up with this big, big move? Okay, well, you know if it's going to go in deep. I'm looking here first, and okay, well, there. Okay, now if we're coming back. And looking at it just at this point, oh, well, now this is the key layer of resistance. If it goes there, it's got to hold this point. If it breaks out above it fast, oh my goodness, the volatility is going to be extreme. So if this market happens to have any type of move and it manages to uh, come to the 18, maybe leave fast, that'd be volatility extreme. So I'm going to be done with Litecoin for this part now because I got Tron. It's just hanging in there, still at the high 300, so I'm pretty satisfied about that. And uh, there we have it, holding in there within the 18 average of highs. Bitcoin cash against the fiat dollar. She's continuing to show, show strength amongst the 18 average of highs. Vericoin against Bitcoin is pretty much in a downtrend and down into the lower end of this range. So it's most certainly in a bear market. Go is uh, had this little breakout in here. And now it's either correction, uh, a successful correction or a failed one. And this a failed breakout, probably fast move lower. Uh, GRS is in a downtrend as well at 5,063. Pretty much the exact same thing as uh, the uh, GO is concerned. I think a lot of the other lower rank coins might be sharing this. I just don't see as many. Binance coin against the US dollar is starting to show correctionary move within the 18 after last lifting off from there here and then really starting its bull market from below the 18 lows. So the last, this is the second time it's found correction here from this point. It's been doing it mainly through that of time. And this level of support done yesterday, let's take a look at this uh, a little more clearly. Four hour term time frame, obviously resistance established huge between 34 and three quarters up to about 35 and a half. Support huge between uh, 32 and a half down to uh, 31. And it's having weakness right now in this amongst the 18 average of lows. So definitely an area of concern, especially after this failed rally attempt, that this might be looking to revert over to the downside. At least for, and then for the downside, we're talking about just filling some of this empty space. And that doesn't mean it will. If they very easily continue to go sideways for an extended period of time, the support area might not go through. It could be a failed breakdown on such. But regardless of this fact, it isn't going to go until it at least gets above that 18 average of highs. So until that's the case, I'm not looking for this to have any type of serious break until at least for now it can get close to 34. And of course, it's changing amongst wherever it goes through. And on the one hour time frame, we're getting a lot of nice little choppy action if you're looking for day trading opportunities. If it remains choppy, this market uh, should manage to make a move and probably get above the 18 average of highs. And well, I mean, you got below, above, nice below move, nice above move, and now a nice below move. On such a DGB, it's kind of hanging in there too, but. Uh, just staying in with this 18. 18 lows is catching up, but if uh, if it catches up in the next few days and it just keeps doing what it's doing, well, well, both the 18 highs and lows is going to flatten out and it's going to just go sideways and then that's just going to be more of neutrality. Just like DGB, you really got to get a clear break above here. It hasn't had that. It's had many attempts to do so, but within all the many attempts, every single time it corrects, it has kept these bullish runs going. It will do that, of course, until it doesn't. Uh, theta, I got a lot of lines on here, so 
that's all for whatever. But uh, we have daily term time frame again. I mean, you have the big move. I mean, a lot of sideways action. Trying to reverse the trend. Up, down, up, down. 18 average barely starting to rise, which is pretty cool. Four hour here. Big, big 18 lows test. Uh, 18 lows test coincides with this resistance. Even coincides with this level here. So very much a big, big spot. So far, so good. But like I mentioned, it's got to give the above the 18 average of highs to attempt to show me that it's a successful correction and it's ready to resume the trend. And even if it got, goes below, it has to hold and stay below it. For back in here, it goes below it. Decent size break. Now the 18 starts to decline. You're resisting it so bearishly. When you see this red candle, you're probably going to go back down. Or after these two green ones, it's going to go down. You're not going to have anything that followed like this. Instead, you had this green candle up to above here, pulls back. Then it goes up to the high, showing strength amongst it for a few periods. Big break high above it, which brings another seven or eight very good volatile periods in a row. Still pretty decent with the last one showing. And this is just uh, three minutes into the session. It's about 4 p.m. Eastern. But uh, this was a de still a decent volatile period, this last one, and as it is. But yeah, very, very big support test. DGB against the dollars, uh, hanging in there pretty good. Four-hour time frame, obviously the upward momentum is now starting to neutralize. Most definitely not declining, but it is neutralizing. But with that being said, huge, huge support here between one five and basically one and a half cents is big, big, big support short term. And on the uh, daily term time frame, uh, after resistance, 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 this is big to be able to support it. It doesn't have to succeed and hold it for sure. As long as we have a very comfortable higher low, eight, uh, price action stays and holds above the 18 average of lows, then that still deems this as a successful correction. But it's been having a lot of attempts to break it, definitely including today and uh, one hour time frame. Well, it was last night, I suppose. But... When it's ready to do it, these markets will just go. And for me, I'm not trying to predict when and where. I'll just, uh, when it happens and I'm there to be able to do it, react to that situation. Looks like T Fuel is the last one on the list. And in doing so, we're starting to be able to get the daily time frame on here. I guess this is day number four, five, six, seven amongst it. No 18 average on it yet, but the big volatility to start and symmetrical. Higher highs and higher lows rather than lower highs. Uh, that's going to change in time. And it's not uncommon to have big volatility to start when these things like this come out. Four hour time frame, we're starting to get the 18 in it. So that within the last break above it, failed breakout, now showing weakness on the 18 average of lows. It's really got to break around this level here. I got two lines in, 454, 576. These are my sell orders. And this is against Binance Coin as well because that's what I want to trade it against. So if 454 comes in, I'm putting a buy order in. Well, I already have it in. It'll be filled. That's what that means. And then I got another one or two below it. And then a sell order here at 576. So if it doesn't hit, then I'll look, obviously, to sell there. And that's what this is. It's just trying to accumulate BNB. I get free coins and uh, T-Fuel. So the strategy is one-to-one -one ratio. And if I sell 1,000, I want to buy back 1,000. And if I, if I sell one but BNB worth of a coin... It's probably going to cost me 0 0.8, 0 0.77, so the remainder is my pocket change. And then if I can get 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100 flips by doing so, well, that's just magnificent. And not caring what the price is, but caring that if I can get a sell order in, I'm starting a chain of an event. And in order to fill it, I need the buyback. So if this thing were to say is hypothetically go down like to 60, lose eight times its value, and it just goes straight down. I'm like, screw it. I'm going to put a sell order in 84. Oh, it rallied to 84. Okay, buy back at 55. Stuff like that. That is about. That is the, that is the plan that I have in play in the game. And if T Fuel just goes out of control and amazing, then I'm going to partition and uh, adequate my sell amounts to ensure that uh, I'm comfortable with the gains and that I can keep on playing with the game, which in easy math means sell less each time. So you sell 1,000, and then it goes up, now you sell 890, then you sell like 800, maybe even 790, then you sell 700, then you sell 620, and then you sell 540, and so on and so forth. You just keep on 
reducing the amounts you sell because if theta fuel goes up seven million times, if I have one millionth of the coins that I have now, they'll be worth more. No, they're not going to go up that much, I don't think, at all, that it's going to go up that much, although I kind of do think it because it just came to my top of my head. And I was just trying to think of one mass, like some massive number that makes no sense. I was first thinking like thousands, and then I'm like, no, use something like seven million, and I think that's the number that I chose. No market's going to go up seven million times. Even your bankroll, don't expect your bankroll to go up seven million times. You can try for it, and you might get relatively close, but a 7 million X gain I don't think is possible. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.